Good afternoon, everyone. Tim Bearden, Chief Academic Officer, Detroit Country Day School. We have two weeks left now in our remote learning environment. Uh, school year is coming to a close. We feel really good about what our teachers and students have been able to do in this remote environment. And it's been fun coming to you and sharing with you some of the work that's being done by our really exceptional students and, and teachers. Today, I wanna to share with you some of the forward planning that we're doing to prepare for next school year. And there's a lot of uncertainty built around um, what the future might hold for everybody. But we're really planning to be together in person in the fall, and we're planning for all the eventualities and contingencies that we can. Um, and of course, if we can't, we'll follow the, the guidelines of the state and local health departments, um, and we have plans for every contingency. Our planning has all been built around our three pil pillars, the academics, arts, and athletics. Um, and I want to share with you a little bit about what that has looked like for us. The portrait is our guiding instrument. Uh, the Curriculum Leadership Council spent a good part of the last year redefining our portrait. Uh, and these are really the elements that we think are critical to cultivate in the students at Detroit Country Day. So when a student graduates from our school, we want them to graduate uh, as, a, as a contributing citizen of the world. So in the academic side, on the academic side of things, we found some real silver linings to our remote learning environment. I'm gonna share with you a little bit of a class I saw today. Algebra two at our middle school, these are seventh and eighth graders. Um, it's really amazing, and remarkable then, work. Another part that took really long was this part because each of these lines was an individual part. So, yeah, each of these lines is an individual part. And then of course, everything, everything here is shaded with inequalities as well. So the two doorknobs are a circle. And so, yeah, yeah, that's basically it. So this is a student who designed a castle um, by using mathematical equations, um, each to represent different lines and shapes in uh, the presentation and presented it to his classmates today live using Zoom. Um, and it really just shows us all the possibilities that exist uh, in a remote learning environment. And these are things that can translate to a face-to-face -face learning environment. So a big part of our planning in academics has been how we take the lessons we've learned in a remote learning environment and translate them into the things that we'd like to do in the fall in a face-to-face -face environment, knowing that those things will allow us to seamlessly transition if we ever have to again into a remote learning environment. So we've really divided our planning into three phases. The triage kind of phase, which is where we were at the beginning, where we just kind of um, were, were taking a lot of information in a really short period of time and making decisions about that. Then we adapted using some really important tools that we've talked about in these updates, Zoom and Loom and Canvas, um, and developed a sort of a routine. And now we're in a transformation stage where we're really planning for the future um, based on these guiding principles. Um, this is from an article by Deloitte and uh, has really helped to give us shape to our guiding principles for our forward planning. I want to share with you Jim Davis, a fine uh, executive director of Fine Performing Arts. He talks to you a little bit about our plans for the arts. Hello, everyone. It is my pleasure to join Mr. Bearden today to give a brief update on the arts. Our faculty and students have been doing an incredible job over these past few weeks continuing their work, as we have highlighted in the buzz and on our social media channels. And while we were not able to hold our annual Celebrate the Arts event this past April, we are planning to host a virtual gallery celebrating the class of 2020 that will be posted at the end of May or beginning of June. So stay tuned for that. As we plan ahead for next year, we are focused on delivering our full slate of concerts and other performances, including additional opportunities to see our advanced ensembles at the upper school and debuting the commissioned work for our choir at next year's Celebrate the Arts on April 25th. We're also committed to adding live streaming capabilities to our Performing Arts Center so that these events can be viewed at home by those who need to do so. Finally, as has been the recent tradition at Celebrate the Arts, I'd like to take a moment to announce our theater season for the next school year. Our fall show, Working, is a Tony Award-nominated musical based on a best-selling book by Studs Terkel, featuring songs by Tony winner Stephen Schwartz, James Taylor, and Tony winner Lynn manuel Miranda. This show is a musical exploration of 26 people from all walks of life, including a teacher, mason, fast food worker, UPS delivery person, and more. In this extraordinary time when we are celebrating the essential workers for all they are doing, this musical brings their stories to our stage. Our winter musical is considered by many to be the perfect musical comedy. This Tony Award winner ran on Broadway for 
1,200 performances after it opened in 1950 and certainly see, needs no further introduction from me other than its title, Guys and Dolls. Our spring play, Relativity, by Marc St. Germain, had been scheduled to be performed this month and retains its place in our season for next year. This drama, set in 1942, sees a reporter interviewing Albert Einstein about his mysterious family history, only to discover far more secrets under the surface. As the reporter questions Einstein about his theory of relativity and personal past, she develops a new, more pressing query. To be a great man, does one need first to be a good man? Thanks for your time today, and I hope to see you all soon. Take care. Thanks to Mr. Davis for that update about the arts. And I'd like to bring to you our Executive Director of Athletics, Dan McLean, to give you an update about the forward planning in athletics. Hello, everyone. Hope to see you all soon. Quick update on athletics as we look to the upcoming school year. Detroit Country Day School will continue to offer a full co-curricular athletic program in compliance with the state of Michigan, the MHSAA, and our own DCDS back to school guidelines. If normal athletic offerings are not possible, the DCDS athletic department is developing contingency plans that will promote our motto of a sound mind and a sound body. Stay tuned for more news on athletics as it becomes available. Take care, everyone, and go Jackets. A lot of moving parts as we plan for the future, but in every aspect of our school, we're planning to give our kids the well-rounded, full experience that Detroit Country Day School is known for with individualized attention and support for every student to give them the best possible experience they can have. Thanks again for your support at Detroit Country Day School. I'll be back next week with another update on teaching and learning in a remote learning environment at DCDS. Thank you.